What's going on guys? We got a Snapchat Q&A here today. Last night I asked uh, my Snapchat crew to send me their questions regarding weight loss. So today I can answer them in a YouTube video. I promised everyone I would keep their names anonymous so you're not going to know who asked these questions but that's all good. How's this camera set up? Do we want to be nice and close zoomed in like this or do we want to be a bit further away today? I think a little closer, a little more intimate might be good. Nice wide angle lens, you get a choice there. All right, so we're good, we're set up, we're ready to answer some weight loss questions. By the way, if you want to ask me anything on Snapchat, send me a snap at Ted Carr. That's my username, Ted Carr, really simple. All right, first question regarding weight loss. How do I balance doing cardio and weight sessions? Well, it all depends on your goal. Is your goal to be a triathlete? Or is your goal to be a soldier? Is your goal to be really jacked and big? Uh, if your goal is just for health purposes, then I would do 30 minutes plus 30 minutes. Do 30 minutes of cardio and 30 minutes of strength training. You can't go wrong with 50-50 split. And what I would recommend you do is every other day, like if you go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then on Monday, do the cardio first and then the strength training after. And then on Wednesday, do the strength training first and the cardio after. And then on Friday, you choose. Do you want to do the cardio first or the strength training first? And then see how it feels for you. Which one do you leave the gym feeling better after? It's all about how good you feel after you leave the gym. So I would say do the 30 minute split, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. And uh, yeah, if, uh, if that works for you, keep it up. If it doesn't work, try something else. Be creative, you're a creative human being. When you start expressing that creativity everywhere, including at the gym, you feel really good about yourself for discovering new things that you discovered, not someone told you that, hey, you should do this. It's all about taking someone else's advice and then making it into your own. So take what I just said there, do a 30 minute split, and then uh, maybe you'll find, hey, a 20 minute split works better for you, or 45 minute split, up to you. All right, next question. I know overeating on raw is considered to be very difficult, but I just feel like I can't eat the perfect amount for my body, so I lose, so I can lose the weight without feeling hungry. I want to lose a good chunk of weight, I come from a binge eating on cooked food, but I come from binge eating on cooked food, by the way. I try not to focus on weight, although after a while it's kind of hard not to. Thanks for the help. Cool. This is a great question. So, I also come from an overeating background on cooked food. I couldn't stop eating once I started eating that cooked food. Um, but some people aren't like that. Some people can totally control their hunger on cooked food, and some people can totally control their appetite on cooked food. So, what I would suggest to not feel hungry on raw would be to increase the amount of fat that you're eating. Either increase the amount of fat you're eating or give your body more time to adjust to raw. When you're eating cooked food, your stomach only needs to be so big. You can fit in enough cooked food calories with a stomach that's quite small because cooked food is so concentrated. But when you move over to the papayas and the lettuce and the celery and the mangoes and the bananas, your stomach has to expand in order to fit in the same amount of calories that it once could on a cooked food diet. You see what I'm saying here? And this physical stretch can take months. It can take months to adapt to a bigger stomach. So when I go to bed, I mean, I'm able to gain 10 pounds in a day and lose 10 pounds. So if I wake up 150 pounds, I can easily go to bed at 160 pounds, then wake back up at 150. But that's because I've learned to expand my stomach. So we call that going to bed like Buddha and waking up like Gandhi. So if you, I don't know how long you've been raw or anything. I'd have no history here of that. There's no report of that here, but I would say, either give yourself more time or just start eating more dense foods like avocados, dates, and bananas. And you can blend up the dates and bananas and you can have your avocados in the evening time for dinner. Um, and then I'm not sure what, what kind of style of eating you're doing. Are you grazing? Or are you having like three set meals? I would suggest grazing all day long. That way you're constantly getting a little bit of food and you're never feeling like, oh my God, I need to eat because you freaking just ate. So that would be my tip there. All right, next question. This is going to be a video question. Hi Ted, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all your videos. You have been such a great inspiration for me. I've been on route for seven days now and I feel it really, really great. So, just wanted to say thank you for all your motivational videos. And you're a huge hug and thanks from Colombia. And I really hope I can meet you one day. Ciao, besos. That was not a question. That was not a question, but that was a cool snap. All right, next question. Hopefully this is an actual question. I have a feeling it's gonna be. All right, what are the best exercises for weight loss? Every time I go to the gym, I always end up gaining weight instead of losing weight. Well, the best exercises for weight loss, 
it's going to be cardio. It's just look at the people doing the most amount of cardio. Who are they? They're the marathon runners. They're the ultra marathon runners. These people do cardio, 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 cardio all day long, and they are just super skinny, super skinny. Um, they don't do a whole lot of strength training. In fact, Kenyan marathon runners are notorious for not doing any strength training. Meanwhile, their American counterpart, their competitors in America, the guys that they're running against, the marathon runners, they're also doing some strength training on top of their cardio. Uh, but the top Kenyans, they're not doing any strength training. They're like minuscule, um, and they don't. They feel like they don't even need to do it. So it would definitely be cardio for strict weight loss. But if you want to maybe feel your best, if you want to maybe look your best, I would definitely incorporate some body weight strength training into your program, whether it's squats or pull-ups or push-ups or lunges, or step-ups, um, stair climbing. Just do some sort of strength training. And uh, if you're gonna like just be doing running or cycling, um, then do it up a hill. That way you can build some uh, build some more muscle where it counts. So. Cardio is the way to go. The best exercises, particularly, I uh, will running. The thing with running is that most people get injured when they start running. So instead of doing just running, I would recommend something like triathlon, where you're doing running, biking, and swimming. But uh, exercise alone is not enough. When you come home after the gym or after your workout, you got to make sure you're focusing on the fruit, the sweet, juicy fruit. Things like the papayas and melons and mangoes. You're not going to gain weight on those things, and they're going to totally satisfy you and hydrate you after your workout. So. I would suggest swimming, biking, running, stair climbing, and uh, doing it at a high enough intensity where your body actually has to adapt to that work that you're putting it under. Like, you can run really, really slow for many, many hours, and you're not going to lose any freaking weight because it's just so easy to run that intensity. And it's so easy to then come home and say, oh, I burned 2,000 calories in that freaking eight hour run. I'm going to come home and now eat 2,000 calories. You're just going to make it up. Uh, I know fat ultra runners, I know fat marathon runners. Uh, in fact, my grandma, I'm sure if she had a gun to her head, my grandma could probably run a marathon as well. It's just so easy to go slow. So you'll see fat people doing marathons, but you'll never see fat people running sub 20 minute 5Ks. Because in order to run a sub 20 minute 5K, you can't be fat, you've got to be fit enough to do it. So I would suggest training for something like a 5K. Focus on improving your performance rather than just dropping the weight. All right, next question here. I want a six pack. Me too. Next question. Did you gain weight when you transitioned your diet? Transitioned from carnivore to vegan and vegan to raw fruitarian? I did not gain weight when I transitioned, no. I actually lost a lot of weight. I was 155 pounds eating a standard North American diet. And then when I went vegan, I dropped to about 150 pounds. And then when I went raw, I dropped to 125 pounds. So I dropped a lot of weight when I went raw. And that's simply because I couldn't eat enough. Like I mentioned earlier, when you're eating cooked food, your stomach it only needs to be like this big because cooked food is so calorie dense, your stomach doesn't need to grow to expand to fit in all the calories. But once you start eating raw, your stomach still is only this big and it's not able to get in enough calories. So finally, over many, many months, 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 it can finally grow to fit in and accommodate the calories. Um, but initially, I lost a lot of weight. A lot, I was detoxing heavily. You could see my spine and... Um, I mean, I'll post a picture right here. You can see me yeah, at Burning Man there, 125 pounds, having just done Ironman Canada, full Ironman, in around like 11 hours. And then like three days later, around a 50K ultra marathon at Burning Man. At 125 pounds, it's really easy to do long endurance cardio like that. But uh, I definitely wasn't strong by any means. Um, but I felt good. I felt clean. I felt light. I felt like I could live and run forever. Those first few months, those first few couple of years on Raw, you feel just absolutely invincible. Um, so I definitely did not gain weight, but I lost it. All right, let's get to two more questions here. Hopefully they're good ones. Ooh, that one's nothing. I'm a vegetarian wanting to go vegan and have been vegetarian for five years. Now feel it's hard to cut out the dairy. Any suggestions? Get inspired. Get inspired. There's so many vegans out there who are doing it dairy free. And there's so many vegan alternatives to dairy. There's the Daya cheese, there's almond milk, there's hemp milk, there's freaking macadamia milk. There's so many vegan alternatives to dairy. And if you just go to notmilk.com or milksucks.com or Google the uh, side effects of lactose, you'll come up with like this big list of reasons why you shouldn't drink dairy. And you come up with this big list of reasons why you should drink the vegan alternatives. And if you watch some YouTube videos of people talking about the, 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 the benefits they found since cutting out dairy, you'll be inspired to actually go that way. So listen to people's stories and you'll be inspired. 
and you check out the facts on Google and you'll be educated. So facts tell, stories sell, and you want to sell yourself on moving towards the, the vegan path, you want to sell yourself towards moving uh, to the dairy-free lifestyle, and uh, you do that by getting inspired. So check out some people on YouTube and just see what they've done. And uh, just know that when you cut out dairy, you're going to feel so much better, man. Cutting out lactose was like the best thing I did for my skin and for my mood. If I drink dairy now by accident for some reason, I'll have like the biggest mood swing ever, man. I'll be super freaking angry. I'll be like, God damn it. And it's not even me. It's the food, man. Food is mood. And when you're consuming dairy from a, an animal that was like tortured, you're going to be like, your, in, in, your insides are going to be tortured. You don't want those hormones in your body. The point of dairy is to turn like a little calf into like a 400 pound beast within like three months. Like you're not a little calf and you don't want to blow up like a beast. So avoid the dairy. You should stop drinking your mother's breast milk around age four, five, six, seven years old. If you're above the age of 16, you definitely don't need to be consuming that anymore. Your body even stopped producing lactose around age seven. So just avoid it for sure. All right, last, all right, last question. All right, la it's the last, one more question here. Last one. I'm at college in the Midwest and I have tried to go vegan and lose weight. Lose is L-O-S-E. Lose is L-O-O-S-E. I've tried to lose weight but can't seem to follow through. There aren't very many options for vegan food. Also, my roommate has a lot of junk food, non-vegan snacks that look good, and then I buy food like that. Any tips? Get inspired! You've got to just saturate your mind with people who are doing it. You need role models, you need examples, you need idols, you need people to look up to, you need people setting the example. It's a monkey see, monkey do world out there, and you set it yourself. Your roommates buy the junk, and then you want to go buy that food and just to be just like them. We are social creatures, we're social animals, we want to connect with others, and we do that by copying others. So just connect with people online who are doing it. And um, then just set the example. Be the light, be the shining light, be the change that you want to see in the world. I would highly recommend just just go vegan or actually in fact, don't go anywhere just become vegan you don't need to go anywhere to be vegan you just become vegan in the moment you know what you say I'm gonna be vegan look at all these celebrities that are being vegan right now just go on YouTube type in vegan celebrities and you come up with this massive list of these celebrity vegans and you just think hey if it's good enough for the celebrities earning millions of dollars a year who's super famous who's super well off who's living the best life ever potentially if they're happy if they're vegan then what the hell? Why wouldn't you be vegan? That's 2017. These people must know something that you don't know. And if you start doing what they do, you can start getting what they get. A better life, better feelings overall. So um, as far as the vegan options, vegan options open up. You start seeing vegan options once you make the decision. The universe has a way of conspiring to help you reach your goals. But you've got to like lay it down. You've got to say, you know what? I'm going to be vegan. And as soon as you make that decision, the word decision is comes from the Latin... Um, root some it's derived from some Latin word that means like to dis, 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 I don't know it just means to cut off from so when you decide it means like you're cutting off from I don't know the actual Latin root but it's something like that I heard Tim Benner talk about it one time at Fruit Fest so when you make a decision you're cutting off from all other potential outcomes um, and you don't need to be that drastic perhaps, but if you are that drastic, if you say, you know, I'm going to be vegan today at least, just today, and you go out and you start looking around your town, you're going to find so many vegan options. Potatoes are vegan. Uh, rice is vegan. Quinoa is vegan. Amaranth is vegan. Buckwheat is vegan. Pasta is vegan. There's so many vegan options. It's too easy to be vegan. It's way too easy to be vegan. If you want to, if you want to find something, if you want to find a diet, that you can actually say it's too hard to find options for, try the fruitarian, try the raw vegan diet. There are very few options. All I can eat is fruit and some vegetables, right? So, but even for me, I'm getting by. I've done this for eight years now. If I can find a way to eat just raw fruits and vegetables and I travel around the world, I'm sure you can find potatoes and rice anywhere you go, man. It's super easy. Get some tomato sauce, get some rice, pour it on. Check out this guy on Instagram called Drew Likes Rice and uh, you'll see how he gets done in college. All right, bonus answer, I'll just, all right, it's a bonus question. I'll just answer this last one. Is being vegan the only option to lose weight healthy? Healthfully, you mean? Um, well, vegan, the vegan diet is really the, the most optimal diet you could eat. There's vegan, there's raw vegan, there's fruitarian. They're all in like that same family. Being fruitarian, being raw, being vegan, being anything but someone who eats a, a standard North American diet is definitely healthy far healthier than someone eating dead animals, that's for sure. But diet is not the only thing. 
diet's not the only thing when it comes to being healthy. So when you say losing weight healthfully, you can be raw and you can lose weight unhealthily. You can be vegan and you can lose weight unhealthily. You've got to do it in a way that's healthy. You've got to do it in a way that keeps you happy. So you've got, to, you've got to stay happy throughout the process. So I would suggest, hey, if you want to lose weight, definitely eat a vegan diet or a raw vegan diet like myself. And then go from there. Do other things on top of that. Make sure you get your meditation in. Make sure you're getting proper night's sleep. Make sure you're staying well hydrated. Make sure you're getting some fitness. Make sure you're consuming great content. Make sure you're expressing yourself creatively on a daily basis so that you're feeling good. And just watch the weight just slide off. So long as you hold the image too. You gotta hold the image of the person you wanna be. You gotta hold the image and you gotta be that person who is the weight that you wanna be if you wanna attain that weight. Um, but if you want to do it in the most healthy way possible, being vegan, being raw vegan, definitely the best two options for your diet. Absolutely. As long as the food is of high quality. You, know, you want to make sure you're eating high quality food. So, that's it. Alright guys, those are all the questions. Uh, well, no, there's a lot more, but I'm not going to get to them all in this video. It's almost 20 minutes long. So, let me just reply to this person. Alright guys, I might have to make a part two because there's like a lot more questions here. And this was kind of fun, uh, answering questions, banging out some videos here. So, I might just press stop on this and upload another video in the next few hours for you. So, peace out, and if you want to ask your questions, send them to Ted Carr on Snapchat, and I'll be happy to get them for you. Adios. Cool, we're back for round two. Let's get into this Snapchat Q&A, weight loss edition. First question, we're gonna try and answer about eight of these right here. Uh, how about gaining weight as a raw vegan? I have been vegan, mostly raw, for like eight months, and my mother says I look skinny. Haha, <laughs> I feel super healthy and amazing though. Well, if you feel super healthy and amazing, then just keep doing what you're doing because you've got to do what feels good in life. If you start doing things for other people, you're not going to feel your best. Do things that make you feel super healthy and amazing and happy for sure. Uh, but honestly, if, if you've got to gain the weight for some reason, if you feel like doing an experiment, you just want to see what it's like to be a bit heavier or you really want to please your mom for her birthday or something and you want to gain some weight, I don't know, whatever the situation is, then uh, load up on the avocados, load up on the bananas, and just generally eat more calories throughout the day, every single day. Never let a day go by where you don't eat more calories. Uh, if you just ate five extra bananas at the end of every single day, you'll put on about a, close to a pound a week. So in the course of like two months, you're gonna put on like eight pounds by eating an extra five to six bananas a day every single day. So it can be hard work because you're gonna, especially when you're raw vegan or you're close to raw vegan, you're gonna be really in tune with your body and you're gonna be like, but I'm full, I don't wanna eat more. But then you gotta force the food in if you wanna gain the weight. Um, and then I would also recommend strength training. Do some heavy squats, some deadlifts, some pull-ups, some bench press. Keep your maximum rep range around uh, eight to 10, eight to 12, if you really wanna put on the size and the muscle. So hopefully that helps. All right, next question. I'm trying to gain weight as a vegan, but I'm finding it really tough. Well, you just gotta eat more. That's exactly what I said in the last, <laughs> in the last uh, question. So, isn't it funny how there's this, this one camp of people who are saying like, oh, I'm having such a hard time gaining weight. And there's another camp of people saying, I'm finding it so hard to lose the weight. And they're probably eating the same diet, right? They're both eating vegan, they're both eating raw vegan. Some people are having a hard time gaining, some people are having a hard time losing. So, you've, the, the people who gain, the people who lose, and vice versa, it's all about where their, where their thermometer is set, where their internal thermometer is set, where their cybernetic mechanism is set. Have they set the vision? Have they set, do they have the self-image of the person who is lean and healthy like they want to be? Or are they just operating by the reflection in the mirror? Are they looking at pictures of themselves saying, ooh, like I'm fat, therefore I'm fat, therefore I'm not able to change because I am fat. Or are they holding an image when they look in the mirror, they think like, ooh, I actually got some potential there. I got a little jawline showing, I got a little like shadow under my collarbone there, got some abs showing. Like, are they focusing on the good things? And are they, are they feeling confident about moving forward every single day with their, with their weight loss or with their weight gain approach? Uh, even though you may not see progress on the outside every single day, even if the scale might not reflect the results that you want, you've got to know that you're doing the right thing. You've got to know that, that, you're, that you're ticking all the boxes. You've got to be really confident with what you're doing. Otherwise, your body's going to have a way of just putting on the brakes and just not getting you to where you want to be. But if you get on a plane in Los Angeles and you fly to New York, the pilot has a program set to get to New York. And even though the wind may come and the plane may go off track a bit, it's always going to get right back on track. It's going to get to New York because that's where it's programmed to get. So you've got to program yourself to get to where you want to be. And you do that by holding the vision 
You do that by goal setting, you do that by relaxing and feeling good about the, 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 uh, the direction that you're moving in, right? So I'm not sure if you've programmed yourself yet, but you've got to program yourself for success by holding the vision of the person you want to be. Next question. What is a healthy weight for a girl who is 5'4"? Also, what are major foods to avoid if we are vegetarian, but people around us control us because we're too young and can't become vegan? All right, well, the latter, the, I mean, the last thing you just said is complete BS. I don't care how young you are, you can control what goes in your mouth. Even in prison, like if you were to be put in prison and all they're feeding you is junk food, you can demand that you're fed vegan food. Like it's, it's 2017, you're probably either in America or Canada or s some civilized place in Europe. You're, you're able to get the vegan food. You just need to ask for it. You need to be brave enough. You need to be confident enough to ask for it. And if they're not willing to, to give, give it to you, then maybe you got to go and earn some money and buy it for yourself. But no one's going to force feed you at age, I don't know how old you are, but if you're 5'4", you're probably at least you know, 14, 15, 16 years old. Um, you're old enough to go make some money and buy the food yourself. Um, and you're too old to be forced, you're too, uh, too old to be spoon fed still. Um, so as for your first question, was a healthy weight for a girl who's 5'4"? I, I don't know. Uh, just go online and type in, type in that exact question. Ask Google, what is a healthy weight for a girl 5'4"? You're going to take some average and you're allowed to be, you know, 5 pounds below, 5 pounds above, whatever. It doesn't matter really what the average weight is. Um, it's all about how good do you feel at that weight. You could be extremely muscular and you could be like, 150 pounds or you could be an ultra marathon runner at 5'4 and you could be 100 pounds. So 50 pound difference because your sport is completely different, it's a different focus. So um, not sure what the healthy weight is but if you feel healthy, you feel good and you think you look good then you're at that healthy weight, no problem. Alright next question, when I get in the state that I want to start exercising there is something in my mind that holds me back and I can't overcome that so I can lose weight and exercise, what should I do? You gotta start telling yourself a different story. You gotta start telling other people a different story. If you've got the same story running in your head that says, there's something in my mind that's holding me back and I can't overcome it, then how are you supposed to overcome it if you just told me that you can't? You're not gonna to wanna to let me down. You're not gonna to wanna to disillusion me by saying, Ted, I can't overcome it, and then go around my back and overcome it. You're, you're gonna to wanna to, you're gonna to wanna to stay consistent with what you're saying. So if you go around telling people, hey, I can't do this and I can't do that, you're not gonna be able to. Because you're setting up other people's expectations for you. And then they're gonna, in turn going to be expecting you that you can't do it. So you've got to start telling people, instead of saying, I can't do this, you can say maybe like, in the past I've had troubles overcoming this. Do you have any tips or advice for how to make it easier to overcome it in the future? That would be a great question to ask, rather than saying, I can't do it. Um, so your question is, I, I, can't over, I can't overcome it, what should I do? Well, the first thing is change your story. Change the story that you're telling yourself. Change the story that you're telling others. And uh, start seeing yourself as a person who is able to overcome it. Start seeing yourself as the person that you want to be. And you'll have a way of just... You have a way of just pushing through that. And you'll, you'll be able to do it. You just need to change the vision that you're holding. And habits, habits can be hard to change, but they're changeable. You can change a habit. The first time you do anything, it starts the habit and cycle but very few people take that first action step. And after you do it the first time, you gotta make sure you do it again the second time, the third time, and the fourth time. Once you go to the gym like five or six times, it does become a habit. Um, if you want a little hack though, maybe you wanna start going to the gym with a partner, maybe you want a workout buddy to go with, maybe you wanna download a new album, put that album in your ear and listen to that new album when you walk to the gym. Just get pumped up, make a routine, get into a rhythm with it, and definitely turn it into a daily habit. Sounds good? Good. All right, I gotta go, the battery's about to die. If you have any questions on Snapchat, let me know, at Ted Carr. And uh, send all your questions there. Look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. Peace out from Hilo, Hawaii. All right, so we're back for part three. I'm just exporting a video with Adobe Premiere, and that takes a while. So while it's exporting, let's get back to some more Snapchat questions. Uh, since I made the last couple of videos about four or five hours ago, a lot more questions have come in. So we'll try and hit all these in this video. Uh, first question is. By the way, this is, these are weight loss questions people sent in to me on Snapchat. If you want to send me questions on Snapchat, you can do that by sending your snaps to Ted Carr. T-E-D-C-A-R-R. -R. All right. What's the best way to stay motivated? I have, like, no motivation after a while of doing it. I have, like, no motivation. You get motivation when you see progress towards things that you actually like doing. And we all like having fun. So if you're having fun and you're noticing some progress, you're gonna stay motivated. 
The problem is most people don't see progress because they don't look for it because they don't know how to set up that environment for seeing progress. So the way to see progress is to set records. The more records you set at the gym, the more chances you'll have of breaking those records. And the first time you set a record, you can be really easy on yourself. You can say, all right, let's see how long it takes me to run a kilometer. And then you could set the record and run really, really slowly and do it in like 20 minutes. Let's be more realistic. You'd probably run a kilometer like 10 minutes if you did it really slowly, like walking pace. And then the next time you go to the gym, all you gotta do is run that same kilometer in nine minutes or even nine minutes and 59 seconds and you'd be like, frick yeah, it's progress. So if you're constantly setting records in all areas, like on the rowing machine or on the treadmill or in the, with pull-ups or bicep curls or squats or deadlifts or whatever exercise you like to do, if you're constantly setting records, then you're constantly giving yourself a chance to then beat that record. And if you ever beat that record, you've made progress. So I encourage people to set records and then try to break them often. Constantly try to break your old records. It's a scary thing to do. To, to well, I get nervous when I'm walking to the gym knowing that today is the day I'm going to try and break that record. Because when you break a record, it's like you're breaking into this new version of yourself. And you're, you walk back out of the gym a different person. You're like, I, I'm now that type of person who can do 10 pull-ups. Whereas before you walked in the gym, you could only do nine. And then it's, it's the best feeling ever doing something that you once couldn't do. It's such a good feeling. But you've got to be looking for those uh, chances of breaking records. And the only way to do that is to first set the record. So set a bunch of records in all areas of the gym. I encourage you to write them down type them on your phone or your notepad or whatever so that you know what you did and then try to beat those same records a week later or a few days later even. Weight loss question. I am still hungry all the time and lacking energy at the gym. What is your take on whole grains and lentils as part of a diet? I'm super inspired and motivated from your videos and a way of life. I have made the change to vegan and have been for about two months. Feel flipping fabulous. Thank you so much. So if you're hungry all the time, I would recommend grazing. Just eat fruit throughout the day. Have some papayas or cut up mangoes or bananas or even dates with you. Um, but if you're having dried dates, make sure you're drinking lots of water with them or at least rehydrate them into a, with water and then blend them up into a smoothie and just drink the smoothie throughout the day. Um, just graze. If you're hungry all the time, it means you're not eating enough. And you're probably going to be eating enough if you just graze more. So don't just have like three, four meals a day, but have like 10 meals a day, 10 little snacks throughout the day. And uh, if you're lacking energy at the gym, well, you're either unfit, so that's totally normal. When I took like a month off going to the gym and I started going back to the gym, I could only last like 20, 30 minutes. And now I go to the gym, I can last like an hour and a half, two hours, no problem. So if you're lacking energy at the gym, it's probably because you're untrained, you're unfit, or you just haven't slept enough. So consider getting more sleep. Don't wake up with an alarm clock, let your body totally sleep in. And get to bed around the time the sun goes down, which could be, in your case, maybe you know, 8 o'clock or something. Get to bed early and then wake up without an alarm clock. And uh, you'll probably have a lot more energy. Plus, if you go to the gym knowing that you're going to be doing something that you absolutely love to do, you'll have more energy. Desire is the triggering mechanism for the release of energy. So when you strongly desire to do something, you're going to have all the energy in the world. It works like that. That's why when you fall in love with someone, you have all the energy in the world. You don't need drugs or caffeine or food to keep yourself going when you're madly in love with someone. You just, you'll stay up to freaking four in the morning, four nights in a row, talking to that person that you love. Just because that strong desire starts releasing energy within you. Or if at three in the morning you're normally sleeping and someone comes knocking on your door and says, hey, you want to watch a movie? You're like, no, man, I'm sleeping. Go away. It's three in the morning. Get out of here. I'm so tired. What happens the next morning at three in the morning when the freaking house catches on fire? All of a sudden you... Holy shit, you get up instantly. The desire to stay alive is so great. You have all the energy in the world. You will book it out of bed. You will go save your family. You'll go save your cats. You'll go grab your photograph books. you grab your iPhone. you grab your MacBook. And you'll get the heck out of the house with all the energy in the world at 3 in the morning. Whereas yesterday, you couldn't even open your eye. You were so tired when someone wanted to ask you if you wanted to watch a movie at 3 in the morning. That's what happens when you've got strong desire. You get all the energy in the world. So if you don't have energy when you go to the gym, it probably means you're not looking forward to it. So work out with a workout buddy and you look forward to seeing that workout buddy set some records and you look forward to breaking those records perhaps. Drop spinach, frozen blocks. Looks not very appetizing. And we're making almond ricotta here for vegan lasagna. How's my sister? She's vegan. Look at that bloke. He came from YouTube. 
All right. Hey, Ted. I was the Henry that left the first comment in your recent vid. Just want to show you this mango. It's low quality, very sour. Just say cooked food, have baseball game. Let me know. What the hell? I have baseball game, and I know if I were raw, I would be more fit to train. That's right, bro. If you were raw, you'd be more fit to train. How can I continue to work out after I dislocated my shoulder? Good question. So when I was a triathlete, if I got injured, like let's say I got a shoulder injury from swimming too much, which would happen from time to time, I would then run and bike more. I'd do some more strength training on my legs. Or I would, when I would get in the pool to swim, instead of swimming with my arms, I would just kick. I'd grab a kickboard and I would just kick. In fact, that's what happened. I broke my thumb. And when you break your thumb, you can't ride a bike. You can't put any pressure on the handlebars at all for like freaking six weeks while it's healing. And you can't put any pressure back when you're swimming either. So broken thumb really screws you up as a triathlete. Uh, so I would run a lot more and I would put the bike on the stationary trainer and I would just hold the handlebars with one hand. Um, you just gotta mix it up. So if you dislocated your shoulder, focus on other bo body parts that you've perhaps been neglecting. When you get injured, it's a good time to focus on your weakness. Um, when you're fit and strong, it's important, yeah, just to keep developing your strength, get even better at what you're already good at, make that just stellar. But if you're injured for some reason, maybe perhaps you overdid it or you didn't have proper technique, maybe it's a good time to take a chill pill, relax, study some good technique, and then work on other parts of your body, like your calf muscles or your hamstrings or something like that. So. You can still train if you're injured, you just gotta be creative with it and uh, you might not uh, be doing what you've been used to be doing, so it might not be as fun, but you get creative and you come up with new things that you normally wouldn't have created, that you wouldn't have come up with if you hadn't injured yourself. So yeah, I think whenever you get injured, it's a time to, to do things that you normally wouldn't have done. And um, it's, uh, it's it, initially it's a pain in the ass, you're like, cause, cause your brain's just not caught up with it. Your brain's just like, oh my God, I dislocated my shoulder. But at the end of those three weeks or something, you're gonna be like, oh, I'm glad I dislocated my shoulder because now I'm so much better in these other areas. Uh, anyways, that's my take on, on uh, what to do when you're injured. But uh, that's it for weight loss questions. I think I answered them all. A bunch of those new snaps that came in were just people thanking me for answering their old questions. Um, actually, I have another right here. I can safely say that this is my last day of classes. Fuck yes. <laughs> it's a good feeling, right? Graduating? That girl's amazing. Julian. My question is how do I resist the temptation of eating like bad vegan foods so, like vegan cakes, vegan chocolates? I like your accent. I'm not going to say your name, but in case people didn't hear it, listen one more time. My question is, how do I resist the temptation of eating, like, bad vegan foods, so like vegan cakes, vegan chocolates? Well, you've got to first just know that you're allowed to have those things. People ask me all the time, they're like, oh, Ted, are you allowed to have this? Are you allowed to have that? I'm like, I can. I can. I am allowed. I allow myself to have those things if I ever want them. But I don't want them because I'm so focused on the fruit. But if for any reason I say, like, no, I'm not allowed to have this thing, then part of me is going to be like, not part of me, but like, all of me is going to be kind of like sneakily being like, oh, what if I could just, just try some? So we always want what we can't have as humans. We're curious monkeys we are. So if you say to yourself, oh, no vegan junk food, no cakes, no chocolates, then part of you is, not part of you, but you're going to freaking want that. The reason I don't say part of me is because you're not made up of little compartments and little parts. It's like you're a human being. You have a mind. Wherever your, your focus goes, energy flows. You're, you're holistic. You're not broken up into those compartments. People are like, well, part of me wants this and part of me wants that. It's, no, it's just you're not clear on what you actually want. So in this case, when it comes to vegan donuts and vegan junk food, you, part of you wants that for some reason. Whatever reason it is, you want some vegan junk food. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's comfort or whatever. But the, point is, the fact is, when you eat fresh, whole, ripe, living fruits and vegetables, you're going to feel so much better. And if you focus on the fruit, you're going to get more fruit. I focus on fruit a lot and every time I go to the market I find good fruit to come home with. Other people don't focus on the fruit at all. They focus on so much cooked food. They go to the same market as me. They walk around they're like, oh, there's no fruit here. What am I going to eat? We're all vegan so hard. I'm just going to go back up some potatoes or rice. And that's like their attitude towards raw vegan. They think they can't do it. There's just not enough out there. But that's because they're not focused on the fruit. So if you're not focused on the fruit, you're going to find reasons to want to have the other 
food in your life. And especially when it comes to junk food. If you focus on junk food, you're gonna eat that stuff. But for me, that's not even food, that's freaking poison. I would never feed my baby vegan junk food. If I had, if I had a young child, or a toddler, whatever, I would never feed my toddler junk food. It's a freaking drug. I'd be getting them addicted to something really early on in life. So, instead, you wanna treat yourself like you treat your toddler, treat yourself with respect, treat yourself with love, feed yourself only the good stuff, and focus on the fruit. And just know, just see, start seeing yourself as the person who eats fresh fruits and vegetables. Start seeing yourself as the person who just says, no thank you, whenever some vegan junk food comes up. When you practice self-control with your food, every area of your life gets better. They did a study with kids when they were really young. They took a bunch of four, five, six-year-olds, and they put them up at a table with a marshmallow, one marshmallow. And they said, all right, here's a marshmallow. And I don't want you to eat this marshmallow for the next 10 minutes. I'm gonna leave the room and I'm gonna come back. If you don't eat this marshmallow within the 10 minute span, if you just let it sit there and don't eat it, I'll come back and I'll give you two marshmallows. So, I mean, I'll give you another marshmallow. So these kids had a lot of reason to not eat the marshmallow because they were gonna be rewarded with two marshmallows if they didn't eat it. So the researchers left the room. They left the kids there with the marshmallow and the kids that went ahead and just ate the marshmallow, they got their one marshmallow. But the kids that waited, the kids who practiced self-control, some willpower, when the researchers came back, they gave them another marshmallow. And they did a follow-up study, like 10 years later, 20 years later, 30 or 40, 50 years later on these people who've grown up, these kids who were once kids and now grown up. And they found that the kids who, who used their willpower at a young age, the kids who had the most willpower to resist temptation, to resist going for the junk food, those kids went on to live happier, more, f more fulfilling lives. They earned more money, they had better relationships, they, they just lived in a better area, and uh, had better body weight, of course. They, just, they were just, overall, they had, had a better lifestyle. All because they practiced self-control at a young age. So whatever age you're at now, if you start practicing self-control, it's gonna benefit you in all areas of your life. When you resist temptation, you take the higher road, you're gonna go to bed feeling more fulfilled. The lower road is easy. Anyone can take that road. Sitting at home watching TV, that's easy. Anyone can do that. Making videos like this, it's a little harder. Putting together really amazing videos, that's way more, uh, uh, more work goes into doing that. But the more work you put into your, yourself and your life, the more fulfilled you're gonna be at the end of the day. So instead of eating junk food, just know that anyone can eat junk food. How many people can resist junk food? You wanna be like those people. All right, so practice some self-control and uh, you'll feel really good about yourself. And uh, if, you, if you want some practice with self-control, maybe start taking cold showers. Cold showers are something that most people want to avoid, but if you're the type of person who takes a cold shower, or at least at the end of your shower, cranks it to be really cold, you're gonna be practicing some, some self-control. All right, peace out, thanks for watching. Hope you got something from this video. Oh shit, didn't record any of that audio. Oh, I'm still getting used to this uh, rig right here. All right, well, I just answered a bunch of questions and none of them got answered, so maybe I'll briefly go through those questions if I can find them. <laughs> this time's like these, man, you just gotta breathe. This is why I practice meditation. If I didn't practice meditation at a time like this, I would freak out, man, but I've learned to just Recognize the signals and breathe. Um, I don't really feel like answering these questions again, sorry. <laughs> I put my heart and soul into those answers. Um, I'm just gonna answer a couple more. But dang, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, when doing intermittent fasting, is fasting in the morning or at night better for you? Thanks. Personally, I'd rather uh, intermittent fast at nighttime. I'd rather finish eating at like 6 p.m. than go to bed then, um, just a bit early, you just fill up by 6 p.m. and then go to bed and not have any desire to eat between six and by the time I go to bed. That way I can sleep through the intermittent fasting period, no problem, and then wake up and then have food a couple hours later, rather than waking up and then not eating until like 2 p.m. or something. That's hard because you gotta deal with being hungry all day long. 
Um, so I like to do it at nighttime. How can I help my dad work out? He's 51 years old. Um, just be a loving daughter. Just go for a walk with him, play tag, have fun with him. Don't expect anything from him. Don't expect him to lose a whole bunch of weight. Just love him just the way he is. And if he happens to lose weight, he'll lose some weight. But just um, set the example for him. Maybe just keep going to the gym, get really fit and healthy yourself, get a bunch of results and be like, Dad, I can show you how to get the same results I got if you want it. I'd be happy to show you, but no pressure. If he wants to do something, he'll do it. How much variety do you need on a raw vegan diet to be healthy? How many different fruits and vegetables do you need? It's a great question. How many pounds a week should you be losing on a raw vegan diet? So the first question was, how much variety do you need? Uh, that's a great question. Many varying opinions on this question. How much variety, how many different fruits and vegetables do you need? Some people believe you need like 20 different fruits a day, 20 different vegetables a day to cover all these nutrients that are undiscovered yet. And um, I don't know. I've been eating a very small variety for many years now. Over the past eight years of eating a fruit diet, I've probably based my staple calories on like six fruits let's think I've gotten out of the past eight years I've gotten the bulk of my calories from these six fruits dates dried dates which I've like usually rehydrated bananas papayas avocados and um, oranges a lot of oranges and um, coconuts yeah six six fruits right there six foods um, and I'm okay, I'm alright, I'm doing doing great. As far as the other question you asked, how much weight should you be losing? It Everyone's going to be different, it all depends. The fatter you are, the easier it is to lose the weight. Uh, if you're really skinny, it's kind of hard to lose weight. So it all depends, but uh, generally speaking, generally speaking, it's, it's kind of dumb to be general here, but you, you normally people can lose a pound a week healthfully, no problem, if they're doing the right things. If you're recording and it's too dark and your shutter speed's all the way open and your aperture's all the way down, then you gotta up the ISO. This is 1600 ISO, this is 2000. We'll go with 2000. All right. So yeah, I lost motivation answering all those questions after I realized my microphone wasn't on. It's the way she goes. Sometimes she goes, sometimes she don't. It's the fucking way she goes. Well, I'm gonna answer a couple more. Get these, wanna get these out there. People got questions, hopefully I got answers. <clears throat> all right, what's the big one? Firstly, I wanna say I love your YouTube videos and all the positive messages that you stand for and send out all your fans. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that a lot. When someone starts a question off, laying it on thick like that with appreciation. Right? I dig that. I am currently in a healthy weight range, but I still want to lose a bit of weight. I exercise regularly and I am vegan. I have been fixated on my diet in the past, which has led to anorexia and a bunch of stuff which jeopardized my mental health. <laughs> so I suppose my question is, how do you get rid of those extra kilograms without bordering anorexia. Thank you so much and keep doing what you're doing. All right, this is a great opportunity to address something. Being fixated on your diet to want to make it super clean and super healthy won't lead to anorexia in the same way, in the same fashion that focusing on just dropping kilos will. If your, goal is to focus, if your goal is to eat as healthy as possible, to be as healthy as possible, you'll find a way of being actually truly healthy. But if your goal is to just drop the kilograms and drop certain foods out of your diet just to drop the kilograms, then yeah, that, that can lead to anorexia. But if you're focusing on how healthy can I be, what's the healthiest foods to eat, and how can I maybe just so happen to drop some kilos by eating as healthy as possible, then that's a bit different. So I would focus on high water content fruits and vegetables, and I would also have role models. I would, I would have examples in my life of people who have like that 
ideal body that, that I want. And I'd make sure like that body's not anorexic and find like an athlete or something, an athlete winning like gold medals or something. You can't be anorexic and be winning gold medals at the same time. So find an athlete who's winning gold medals and um, just be like, hey, that's a nice body. If I eat tons of fruits and vegetables, a lot of healthy fruits and vegetables and work out a lot, then um, my body will perhaps look like that as well. Rather than thinking, I just need to drop kilos, just need to drop kilos, just need to drop kilos. Focus on being healthy rather than wanting to drop kilos. Hey, Ted, I'm 5'10", 130 pounds. How would you recommend getting to 125 pounds without compromising performance? Dude's young. I want to show you his picture. Maybe he won't like that, though. I'm supposed to keep this anonymous. All right, well, this is a young kid. Let me look at him again. 5'10", 128 pounds. How would you recommend getting to 125 pounds without compromising performance? I don't even know what sport you're doing, bro. Are you a runner or something? Also, what would your advice be as a starting fruitarian diet? I don't know whether to dive straight in and see or gradually get my body used to it. I'm doing two days vegan, four days vegetarian at the moment, but would love fruitarian when I get to university. I'm 16 years old now. Any advice would be great. Answering you in a video now. Uploading tomorrow. All right, well, I don't have too much information on you, bro, but um, you look healthy. Uh, I would recommend um, cutting out dairy, like completely cutting out dairy. I'd recommend cutting out gluten altogether. So you cut out dairy, cut out gluten, replace it with almond milk, replace it with hemp milk, replace it with you know dairy alternatives, and then cut out gluten, replace gluten with things like buckwheat and quinoa and amaranth potatoes and things like that. Uh, sweet potatoes, at least, not just plain old white potatoes and not just plain old white rice. And then focus on the fruit. Focus on the fruit, focus on the fruit, focus on the fruit. You get more of what you focus on. And you're really young, dude. You're really young. Your mind is like really sharp. It can be really sharp if it's not like hampered down by, by food. So focus on the fruit. And you're just brand new into the vegan scene. You're just brand new into the raw vegan scene. Saturate your mind with vegan content online. Saturate your mind with raw vegan content online. Get some get some books. Check out the 80-10-10 diet by Dr. Graham. Check out Ann Osborne's book, Path to Paradise. Check out the live food factor. That book is amazing as well. Big green book. Um, just educate yourself. Nature's first law. Learn, 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 learn. And then your main question, how to drop from 128 pounds to 125 pounds. I don't know what your sport you're doing right now is, but bro, if you start training for a marathon, and you're probably too young to do that, but if you start training for like a half marathon, and you start going out for like some, some 10K runs, some 15K runs, and you start eating more watermelons and oranges and tomatoes and cucumbers, you're gonna drop the weight so quickly, bro. But just stay away from the gluten, stay away from the dairy, and be a vegan 100% and then raw vegan as best as you can, as much as you can. That would be my advice for you there. Just get inspired, dude. Get inspired. Have some role models and just saturate your mind with their content. Seriously, what it's about. Dude, I feel so badly for the, for the people who I answered the questions, but the microphone is on mute. Still on, right? Good. Um... Yeah, I just feel badly for you. Sorry. I don't know who you are either, because I just boom, boom, boom. All right. Uh, what happened with cholesterol? Because fruits have a lot of sugar, and that makes cholesterol very high. I know that is good because it's energy for body, but I'm worried about that. Um, if you're eating a fruit-based diet, your cholesterol is not going to go up. Your bad cholesterol is not going to go up. Uh, if you, like, you know what makes your cholesterol rise? Refined sugar and lots of fat. So most people, most Americans eat way too much fat in their diet. And then they add some sugar, like some from Coca-Cola or some freaking, you know, um, ice cream or some um, sugar candy, whatever. They eat a bunch of sugar and their diet's already full of fat. So they add that sugar on top of their fat and their freaking blood sugar spikes and they get diabetes and their cholesterol goes up. And uh, they're eating too many animal products, so their cholesterol is especially high. But if you're just eating a fruit diet, you don't need to worry about too much cholesterol. That's for damn sure. All right, last question of the night, and then I'm tapped out. I'm done. I really am staying on fruits and vegetables, but it's hard to stay raw. Any advice on transitioning would be a maze. So you want to transition, huh? I recommend a few things. Number one, get inspired. Number two, stock up. Like, go to the grocery store, come home, and just load up your 
fridge, load up your fruits and load up your fridge, load up your freezer, load up your cupboards, load up your whole kitchen full of fruits and vegetables. And then just stay inspired. So the first step is getting inspired. Next step, stocking up. Next one is stay inspired. And then just uh, eat enough and give yourself time to transition. Give yourself time to transition. If you want to surround yourself with like minds, if you want to surround yourself with people who are vegan, people who are raw vegan, then you want to hit up certain fruit festivals. There's a bunch of fruit festivals this summer. There's the Denmark Fruit Festival at the end of July. Link in the description. There's the UK Fruit Festival if you're in London. If you want to go to London, you want to go to England. It's the UK Fruit Festival, start of August, August 2nd to the 6th. And then there's the Woodstock Fruit Festival from August 21st to the 28th in New York. And uh, it's happening all this summer, those three festivals. And if you use the coupon code Comfort Yourself, you'll save 100 bucks discount on those festivals. So that's what I would recommend if you're transitioning, honestly. Like come to these festivals, meet up with a bunch of people, and uh, get inspired, stay inspired, stock up, stay stocked up eat a bunch of fruit and focus on the fruit and you'll be good to go no problemo all right thanks so much for watching peace out from hilo hawaii